Chill with us. It's not your regular hip hop album. It's a comedic satire inspired by the late great Bill Withers. Rest in peace. Uh. They know me over there. The gangsters call me square. First song on the album is called Motion. I got that beat from the world famous Mike and Keys, Nipsey Hussle's producers, man. They know me over there. The gangsters call me square. But ain't nobody running up Ric Flair airs. Fake fight rape type, test them hairs. DNA will pray, extend pairs. What I'm referring to is that they know me everywhere. Where the killer's at, where the regular dudes at, they know me. And I'm just myself, but me being me is good enough. You know, I ain't no gangster, I ain't no, I'm just a regular man that, you know, from where I'm from. The fact that they know me over there and ain't nobody running up Ric Flair airs means I'm so confident in me and if somebody had a difference about how I feel about me, ain't nobody running up to stop it. You feel me? And if they did, it ain't gonna end how they think it, it is going in. Too many niggas wearing Jordans, equal testimony recordings. Yeah, so run off and go get fly and kill them all like COVID guy because every real nigga knows his why. Sometimes, you know, in the streets or, you know, whatever you're doing if you're hustling, if it's too many niggas winning, it's likely some foul play going on. Probably some snitching, you know what I'm saying? So you need to get away from, you know, situations where it's too good to be true. Black is beautiful to me, this is all I see. It helps my chi. No more buying bricks, I only buy IPs. The jacker man gonna starve, I need to buy IVs. So black is beautiful to me. That's basically a, a statement, like I love being black. That's all I see, my worldview is black. I see everything through a black lens. It helps my chi is just a reference to it puts things in order in my life because I know what I am, I know my basis. With chi and feng shui and all that, it's all about the placement of things to promote the positive flow of energy. So when you know who you are as a man and you're grounded in that, like I'm grounded in my blackness, um, everything else will flow fluently because I know who I am and what I represent. I'm not a street nigga, that's discreet nigga for defeat nigga. I got a Kevin Hart, so let me explain. This black on black is bum clothes, we need a change. So lighten up a tad bit and laugh at my pain. I'm not a street nigga, like there's this misnomer that if you a hustler and you out here, especially in Cali, that you gotta be a particular type of fella. You gotta be a crip or a blood or you gotta be this cliche ass man. And for me, I'm neither one of those. I'm just a hustler. For me, it's a trap to call yourself a street nigga. Once you start putting these titles on you that you didn't create, if you're not self-defined, you accept the definition of whatever that title is. So I stripped the whole street nigga moniker that's very common, even though I relate to that. I like Kevin Hart a lot and what he's accomplished as a businessman, how his crew is solid, and he seems to be a man that practices accountability, so I just used him and flipped the names of some of his specials as metaphors. Me being one of the only MCs that's actually a real comedian, I can toggle back and forth between the world of stand-up comedy and raw hip-hop. I was rhyming before I ever told a joke, five albums in before I ever told a joke, and that's my way of meshing both worlds. Bitch, pour me a drink. This woman is cute and this one here needs a strength. I see it all coming so I know when to blink. I'm not a pimp, I'm a prophet. Since life is a bitch, I tell that hoe when to stop it. That if I owe you something, you can get it from God. So to go back to the beginning, the whole Chill Withers project is a comedic satire. Basically, the angle of the project and the writing is that life is a bitch. So I'm not referring to a woman, I'm referring to life being a bitch, which is a phrase that was coined by Langston Hughes called life being a bitch, how hard life can be. So with that metaphor of life being a bitch, like a woman, I took the perspective of a pimp where you gotta do whatever you gotta do to control her mind. So this whole album is like a teaching thing for me and other niggas like, hey, you know, if you, if you wanna win a life, you, you gotta really be the head. You gotta take, her, take control of her and put in the work so she can do what you want her to do. You know what I'm saying? So the hook speaks to that. Brother, you're a god and this my favorite earth. At war with these mortals, never wager thirst. Make her taste it first. Finger dipped in slurp. If pussy smells like a gator burp, that's where danger lurks. Brother, you're a god. I got that from a phrase from Phil Valentine, who is in the metaphysics. He's just like a multi-genius type of cat. And he has, a, he has a saying, which is an African parable that says, we are all gods having a human experience. So basically I'm reminding you that you're a god. You know what I'm saying? What makes you a god is that you're, 
you have the ability to create, manifest, reminding you of your power. And this is my favorite earth. Like, there's really no other options for it. So you might as well be, be a god while you're here and make the best of this planet. Even though it's fucked up, it's got to be your favorite place because this is all you got. Being at war with these mortals are people who think normal. People who try to make you feel embarrassment or shun you for being outside the box. Those are mortals because they don't understand the power of their mind. And they, want, they do everything. A lot of family is like that, where they see you elevate and they want to pull you down to match their perception of you. So we at war with these mortals. What I'm saying, never wage your thirst is like, don't be eager to fit in. That bet is too, it's not a big enough bet fitting in. The payoff ain't big enough. If you're going to bet, you might as well go big. So bet on you, go big on you. The metaphor of life being a bitch, when you fucking with a, a, a woman and you playing with her vagina, a lot of times you stick your fingers in it and you make her taste it, her own pussy. Because if she ain't going to taste her own pussy, then why should you? So when you're in total control of a bitch, she going to taste her own pussy. She's going to do what you tell her to do because she's under your command. If she tastes it first and go on, you know what I'm saying, do what you do with her. If her pussy smell like a gator burp, that's her danger alert. Gators eat a lot of meat. So a gator breath gonna smell like a lot of different types of meat. So if you, if a bitch pussy smell like a gator burp, that means there's been a lot of different meats in that pussy. It's danger there. You feel what I'm saying? Cause a, a gator will eat anything. Life is a bitch cause a lot of niggas will let her eat whatever she want to eat. And if you're really doing it the right way, your life is supposed to be consuming what you are up to or what your goals and aspirations is. That's when you live in life, you know what I'm saying? So that's a metaphor to just trying to be, uh, you know, not necessarily being in control like a control freak, but just having some say over what happens in your life and where it goes. And that's a fight that most motherfuckers ain't willing to fight. But they gonna talk bad about you for doing it. You gotta be prepared to deal with that. Lean as damn near hair on, hit the brakes, then pause. You are not a tough guy. Those withdrawals cause nausea to body aches. Clothes and walls, pistols pop for addiction, expose the cause. Man, in this new generation, a lot of these cats are thinking the drugs that they own is different than the heavy stuff. A lot of people are making these distinctions between uh, the negative things they do in comparison with the negative things that other people do. Like, if you got a vice, you got a vice. A lot of these street niggas is base heads. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, but where I grew up or where I'm from, sometimes, you know, uh, dudes are sending base heads on missions. You want this rock? Go shoot this person for me. So you got to watch who you, who you honor in a certain way because he may look cool, but this, this, he may be a base head type nigga. And you think they out here popping for the set or popping because it's fashionable or popping for a cause, but they really fight an addiction and they really pop into a piece that addiction and popping is metaphoric. Like they could really be popping money wise or socially and they taking all that money you invest in them and they just getting high and being, you know, damn near basic, but they're not offering you nothing in return. And so at least my shit, once you get it, I feel like it's going to offer you something in life. It ain't no tough guy rap. It's more instructions on how to be you and do you and get what you want. Throw away shooter. You'll be dead in a week and I'll be in Bermuda. Coded calls. Easy puller, leave if not constructive, neely fuller. If you don't know who you are, you're just gonna be somebody's pawn piece. That's somebody who th seems to be a tough guy, but they really just a tough guy that's a disposable tough guy for somebody else's cause. So if you're gonna fight for something, you might as well fight for your, what you believe in, which is you and your core group of niggas, but you can't just fight for everything because everything ain't worth that fight. You know, while you fighting for some bullshit, I'm gonna be somewhere chilling. Easy puller, leave if not constructive, neely fuller. So basically meaning we all got straps. It ain't nothing to say you carry a pistol. That ain't no gangster. Everybody got a gun. In our culture, sometimes niggas have guns and they think they the only ones that got them. Everybody has a gun nowadays. In Detroit, where my grandmother's from on the west side, she has a gun on her when she takes out the garbage. This is an 85-year-old woman, so having a gun don't mean nothing. So Neely Fuller is a multi-genius. Look him up on YouTube, read his books. He has, a, he has a book called The United Compensatory Code Book and Guidebook. And he says that black men should stay away from each other a lot of times because we don't practice constructive behavior patterns. If you sense that it's not constructive, you should leave. Don't participate in non-constructive activities because it's gonna lead to nowhere. It's gonna lead to confusion, dissension, beef. So uh, leave if not constructive, neatly fuller.
forklift courtship, unload your problems and force fit courtship. A lot of stuff could be non-constructive. You know what I'm saying? You could be dealing with a woman, your homie and his homies, and it's not really constructive activity because it's not really creating. If it's too much of a heavy lift, you probably shouldn't be messing with it. You know what I'm saying? It depends on what it is, but you got to really be ch uh, choosy about where you apply your labor to. Energy, you can't get that back. Once you spend it on something, you can't get it back in return. You got to wait to replenish it. So you want to make sure that every moment counts. Sometimes you can't force somebody to get your core values. If you have a good core value and a good way about you and somebody is not embracing that, that effort ain't worth it sometimes. I know a lot of people out there don't want to be alone, so they want to force themselves on people because they just know that what they're doing is the right way. And if you're forcing that on somebody and they're not accepting it, that don't mean that it ain't right. That just means that might not be the right time or not, might not be the right person. So accept that and move on. A lot of stuff that we trip on ain't even us. It's other people's interpretation of us. And they're allowed to interpret you however they want to interpret you. But you got to be man or woman enough to accept that and keep it pushing. She likes to spend money door sit poor chick surpriser with financial advisor whore gift you know this materialism is running so rampant in our community women like to spend money or life is a when life is a bitch you don't and you don't control the the, uh, the bitch of life she gonna spend her time or money with somebody else so you got to give her direction door sit poor chick meaning if you're trying to get a woman in pocket sometimes you got to spend that extra quality time with her you got a door sitter you got to be at her door peeking in, making sure everything is right. You got to door sit a poor chick because she's poor because of her mentality. So you got to be there when she's coming in and out of the door to make sure that she's thinking right. And when she opened that door, you surprise her with financial advisor, whore gift. Any man giving a woman instruction is, that are good is a gift to that woman. You feel me? So you got a door sitter so she can see it your way. You know, surprise her with this instruction, so financial advisor instruction. So this really ain't about pimping. I know it seems like it is, but it's not. This is about how to control the bitch of life. And that's motion. Appreciate Mike and Keys for dropping that fire uh, beat on the album, man. Love and respect to y'all. God, God, God.